Welcome to a little bit of Lab Rat Fun Networking with Fish. What we're going to go ahead and do today is create some Spirant Test Center streams and also um, have in that the QoS, some QoS settings. And it's not going to be very exciting to do the Spirant Test Center streams if we just put the cable back to back. So I just grabbed an environment that I already have up and running in uh, the lab in the other room uh, currently playing with. So I have a, uh, happen to have an IWAN, Intelligent Wide Area Networking uh, Lab in the other room with some real equipment. And so what we're going to do is there is a port here on a switch um, in branch one. And there are two routers. This would be known, as, of course, as a two router branch. And branch one is anything with IP address 10.1 slash 16 in that environment. Branch 2, while we're not using this for this, is anything with 10.2. Branch 3 is anything with 10.3. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to use 10.1.101. So it's the VLAN 101 subnet in branch 1. And it's going to talk to 10.3.101 over in branch 3. And so we're going to go ahead and go to that. So let's go ahead and go over to my Spirant Test Center. So this is my Spirant Test Center, and I, as I was mentioning, if we go to the version code version, this is uh, 459. It is an appliance, and so if we actually go to tools and equipment information, um, it's actually a N11U, and the if you notice, I'm actually on port 8 here, so you can go over to the test modules, and port 8 is an EDM 2003B. It's one of the older models, but it works absolutely great for me for just nice uh, nice playing around. So this is branch one, and this is branch three. We're not going to deal with branch two. We're not going to deal with the uh, internet or the data center core. As you see from a stream flows perspective, I have no stream. So we're semi starting from scratch. And what I mean by we're semi starting from scratch is branch one already has devices on it. What I did was I took a Spirant, what is called a TCC file. Um, and um, I kept the hosts in there and just blew away the streams. So we're going to actually use VLAN 101. So here's 10.101. We'll use 10.1.101.11. Uh, and we're going to have that talk with just randomly picking one. And I'll have that talk to 10.3.101.11. So 10.x.101.11. Uh, one is in, they're both in VLAN 101 and their local environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to send traffic between here and here and for grins and giggles also to see some IWAN stuff while we're here and the markings of the QoS. I'll send traffic that is um, EF, which is expedited forwarding um, in the DSCP world. And I'll also send a uh, like um, an AF41, how's that? So I'll send an AF41. So I'll send a, an EF and an AF41, pretending that that's our business critical uh, traffic. So we'll create streams. So let's go ahead and go over here to the Spirant. We're going to go to Stream Blocks. And we'll click Add. And so what I typically do is I typically go ahead and come down here. If I have a lot of ports, then I'll just unclick this, which will do a deselect of everything else. Pick the two branch to the devices that I want, branch one, branch three. And then again we want 10.1.101 and it's going to talk to 10.3.101.11. And it says unidirectional, but really what I want is I want bidirectional. What I want is this says that this is the source and this is the destination. But if I click bidirectional, then we'll actually make two unidirectional streams, which is exactly what I want. So add, and we're going to go ahead and hit next. I'll let you know what I do. I leave that alone. I leave that alone. I change it later. And if we come in here, it's possible that if you went with the default settings for the Spirant, you're not necessarily going to be liking the uh, the QoS default settings. At least we didn't, so we changed them. Um, so once you actually make a device, you'll notice in here. So um, if I were you, what I would do is this is your, if you have a VLAN, this is your cost, your priority bits. Um, as you notice, ours are zero. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and come in here. So we're always going to be zero. Our defaults are zero for the toss and the cost. And UDP. 
and then I'm going to add a header. I'm going to go ahead and do RTP. So I'm just showing you what you can do. These are actually called bounded stream blocks. You can also make raw streams. I like the bounded stream blocks because I have um, more that I can play with. I also really actually for certain types of traffic, I really want very realistic type traffic that's flowing. For example, again, with um, an SD-WAN solution, um, many of the SD-WAN solutions, they're going to be looking to say that the sequence number is increasing. They're going to be actually looking and paying attention to your application because we're into a very, very application um, aware environment nowadays. So I want to go ahead and change this to div serve and make this EF. Now what you'll notice is I actually made it EF um, or what's called 46. So expedited forwarding, what is called 46. Um, now the interesting thing is that the DF DSCP values are six bits of the eight bits of the um, toss byte. And so if you look at it, the spirant will typically give you the entire amount of bits, and we'll look at that later. So um, while it's not actually going to say EF there, it's going to say B8. I'm just very used to that. You might not be. So um, let's see. Let's go ahead and do this. And I want, because I'm going to do um, RTP 16384. This is a very quirky thing that I do. We're going to edit the value. And we're going to make this 18384. So this is the quirky thing that I do. I always do it in the RTP range. I always start with my source port at 16384. I always start with my destination port as 18384. And you'll notice what I do later. So we're going to go ahead and expand the RTP. And pretty much everything here is you know, pretty realistic. Um, we're going to go ahead and insert a modifier on the sequence number because it's not realistic for the sequence number not to get incremented. So we're going to go ahead and as the traffic is getting run, we're going to increment the uh, sequence number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, another thing that's typically not the case in an RTP environment is a, a non-zero SSRC. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fix that. So then if we do this and this, so we have our sequence number, which is incrementing, and we have our non-zero um, SSRC, and we have our ports and UDP that are in the RTP range because, again, um, a lot of application aware. In fact, if you were running this against what's called the IWAN app, this would actually be recognized as RTP audio. So I always do frames per second of 100. So we're going to go ahead and do a finish. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and say that this is EF and this is branch 1 going to branch this is just typically what I do so that later on when customers are looking at this or I'm trying to troubleshoot something that the descriptions uh, make a quick and clear pop. Another thing I'll sometimes do is I'll actually say um, let's see um, B to B which for me is branch to branch and then I'll say like EF and then I'll add it. Uh, expand this a little bit. When I have lots and lots of streams, this really helps out a great deal. So we'll have branch to branch EF, and then I can organize. So if I had, um, I like really having something in here so that I can quickly and easily look at the east-west traffic or the north-south traffic or whatever it is I want to do. Now, I'm not done here. So this is kind of sort of a lot of how it's going to get set up, but I'm not done. I'm going to customize the view. I always do this uh, once you actually get a file going. Uh, you're pretty good. So the diff serve, I want to see the diff serve, right? So I want to see the diff serve. And the other thing I want to see is I want to see the UDP source port uh, and the UDP destination port. So I'm going to add those. And uh, the question, of course, is where do I want them? So I'm going to go ahead and take all three of them. Right now, they would come right after um, the, the, the source. They would come in right here. So I actually want them probably right after destination. So I'm going to move them down one. So they're going to come in right here. So there you go. So I have B8, 16384. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to click Apply. Uh, why am I going to click Apply? Every time that the uh, button Apply turns green, I've been trained by Spirant and by the Spirant Test Center 
that that is a possibility that um, I have not clicked apply recently and I have made changes, which means that the configs that I have here are not the configs that have been applied and pushed out to the Spirant. So I'm just trained whenever I see the green up there. I don't even typically think about it. I just go there. So let's go ahead and do a duplicate. I told you I wanted to do an EF and an AF41. So what I do is a lot of times I'll have a lot of streams that I'm creating, a lot of different branches, a lot of different data centers, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'll do is I'll get one going the way I want. Um, for example, in the situation with the RTP and the UDP, and um, and also the, the QoS setting, and I will then duplicate it. So what we want here is we actually want AF41, and that's going to be, actually I'll just go ahead and come up here, because as we can see this is branch 1, 2, branch 3, so we'll just do this, come back over here, AF41, and then I will do a, whoops, a daisy, copy and paste, and then I will come here and make this branch one to branch two. Now the tag still has that other tag, so I'm gonna have branch to branch and then AF41, and I'm going to deselect that and then I'm gonna add that, and then that's gonna come up and then I'm gonna deselect this, I'm gonna add that. And again, this helps me a lot, especially have, I have unicast streams, multicast streams, uh, different types of things because I might have tons and tons of different uh, spiral traffic generator streams. Now, I said AF41, but it clearly is not. So let's go ahead and go in here and edit this. So we're going to go into the frame and the IP header and then come here. And we're going to go ahead and make this not a EF, but an AF41. So AF41 for assured forwarding 41, which is 34, which is 88, which looks a lot similar to Baker 8, uh, but don't let that confuse you. And so you'll see that this is 88 here, but that's still Baker 8. So what you can do is you can go ahead and come here, right click over here, and then do a copy down. So um, I have created something new. You can see they're gray, now they're green. And so I have then applied, so these were gray. Um, I clicked the green button and then they went green. So um, now what we have here is I might normally build a whole bunch of other things and you might wonder if I built an AF11, would I still do the, um, the audio and the RTP? When I'm using the Spirant Test Center for doing testing against something that um, uh, like intelligent path control where I don't necessarily want to use true stateful traffic like if I did an FTP intelligent path control um, will not show me the amount of if I'm FTP and I'm doing TCP which is guaranteed delivering I'm gonna get window sizing in there I'm gonna get back offs and I might actually get hidden from me the very quick um, moving from the primary to the secondary, which is fine for real world experience as to what the customers are gonna see, but I'd like to be able to get into, oh, that was a second, oh, that was two seconds. Um, so I prefer to use something that's UDP based, uh, not TCP based when I'm actually doing uh, failure scenarios. And that's just um, how I've been doing CPOX for all these years. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with 100 frames per second. And we'll just leave it at 128 for right now. Um, you can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. Um, let me show you what I do next is I actually come in here and I'm going to have tons of other streams typically. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, you know what, I want to fill custom. And what I want to do is I want to increment and I want to step by two. So I actually want it to turn out to be uh, 384, 386, 388, and uh, 390. And so there we go. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, right click, and I'm going to, sorry, right click right here, not up above. I'm gonna do a fill custom. And this time I'm actually going to do a decrement. So I'm gonna do a decrement by two. And so this is what I mean what I do because um, a lot of times I will re reuse the same um, IP addresses. Like I might have uh, 10.1.101.11 and 10.3.101.11 having, you know, tons of streams in between them, each other. 
and and I might have tons of UDP RTP pretending that you know I've got all this traffic and I want to be able to see some reporting from an AV perspective so I really want to see the granularity so this is what I always do so so we're gonna go ahead we see the green here so we're gonna click apply and I'm gonna go ahead and ARP if I hit ARP right here it'll ARP on everything that I just highlighted as opposed to hitting what I call the big ARP button in the sky. The big ARP button in the sky will actually ARP all the devices over here, which we would actually have a failure over on a data center. Uh, again, it's not uncommon that I'm gonna have a lot of stuff like that going on. So everything looks like that's good. So I can come up here and just say, start traffic on all ports. So let's go to the results. Um, this is the way that I like to see my spirant for uh, traffic. I don't care about these other numbers, total transmit, total receive. I just don't care about them. What I care about is what's happening right now. Um, I should be sending two, I should be generating 200 frames per second and I should be receiving 200 frames per second. Um, and that's all that matters to me because these receive counts are not what are called signature frames. So I don't really care about them. So I usually do this, move this over. I'm going to come over to advanced over here and um, I have no drops, so this is all my traffic. I have no drops, and this is my um, average latency, my minimum latency, my maximum latency. Again, these, at, these latencies were not here before. I added them. Uh, again, you can come here, highlight this, and then just pick what you want. You can pick latency, uh, and then you can add it. Um, as the other ones, you can see the other ones are already there. Um, you can pick whatever it is that you want and then add it over, or you can remove, so you can just fine-tune this the way that you want. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to see that this traffic is actually getting there. So let's go ahead and see what's happening here. So we're going to go into the live action. So what I want to know is I want to know what traffic is going on. Now this is all of the traffic. There's no filter in here. I actually have a filter in here. And if we go look at it, it's actually what's called CPOC Voice. Let's go look at what CPOC Voice looks like. So CPOC is the group that I work in, Customer Proof of Concept. And this is a custom flow. So I said, okay, I want to, um, this is a custom protocol. So I want a uh, layer four port is UDP. And I want the source to be um, in, this, in this range here. Um, and I just did that just because of the fact that we were just doing um, some additional other testing as well. So this is just the one that I use. Uh, the other thing is I want to make sure that it is EF. Now if I do EF, then what's going to happen is I'm not going to see that AF41. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say test center fun. And I'm going to get rid of this EF. So and then apply. And then we'll go ahead and click OK, do a refresh here. And this is actually the traffic that is going, this is the Spirant Test Center traffic that we just created. Uh, the EF is the yellow that you're seeing. The AF41 is this kind of sort of a gold color. So you can see that if you highlight here, it'll say protocol UDP and then at the bottom, it was um, AF41. You can also go ahead and follow things and find the exact path. So as you see, we're actually going from branch one, router one, over to branch uh, three, router one. Now from a Spirant test center perspective, um, that's what we're doing, but let's go ahead and see what that looks like on the wire, well, actually in the router. So if we actually do a show, um, this is just IWAN show domain, IWAN master, and then traffic class summary, what we'll see is we are seeing the EF and we are seeing the AF41. So this is this, and if we do a show uh, master traffic class uh, detail, uh, what we'll see is that the EF traffic, which is right here, is actually going over the MPLS tunnel, which is the tunnel where you have one throat to choke and <laughs> your service provider that you're doing the tight SLAs with. But I actually have a backup over on INET A. And um, this is the other one. And the other cool thing is we'll go ahead and do a, let's do a detail. 
Uh, if we do a detail, there's one additional thing that we get, which is really, really kind of cool. And this is a newer thing, uh, not to go off to the side about IWAM, but uh, policy decision point. So this will actually tell you that for this traffic class up above, which is the EF, um, everything here has passed. So it's usable, it's reachable, we don't have loss, we don't have delay, we don't have jitter. Uh, the bandwidth is fine. Everything is passed. So both links, actually the primary over the MPLS and the fallback over the INET is fine. So we're going to go ahead and you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and have a little bit of fun here. We're going to cause impairment. Let's, let's cause impairment. Uh, just so that you can actually see because we have some traffic classes that are specifically keen off of those DSCP values that we set in. So I actually have up here I have a, um, uh, a what is called a WAM bridge. I have an impairment generator, and I can just make this big, huge problem right here. Not a blackout, but a brownout. Uh, let's go ahead and actually do 2% loss. So we're going to go into a VM, which is an OVA of, of something called WAM bridge, which you can actually get out on the internet. We're going to come in here, and we're going to cause loss. And so let me just double check my loss uh, values. Yeah, so my EF should not exceed loss more than 1%, and my AF41 should not exceed loss more than 1%. So let's go ahead and come in here and go back over to the Aspirant Test Center. And we have had no drops. Let's actually open up the, this is the WAM bridge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say custom. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is how much bandwidth I have. And the only interesting thing with the WAM bridge, it's free. But if you put loss in, it's actually a bump in the wire when you haven't enabled it to do impairment. So I can't really do a zero. I don't find that I can do a zero delay because I can't tell it to have no delay between picking it up from the one and moving it over to the other. So I do a one. But the threshold is like 150, so this is not a problem. Uh, packet loss 2%. And let's go ahead and go. So we hit enter. So let me just do control alt. And we'll come back over here. So this is the Spirant test center. And we're sending 100 frames per second. And you can see that we actually had some loss. Um, and some some max latency. Of course, it was lost. So that's got averaged in, and so we actually had from. So let's let's do this this way. So the EF traffic from branch three to branch one lost 13 packets. Um, I'm running 100 frames per second. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> very fast. Uh, and then the other way was seven, nine, and 12. So let's go ahead actually and come over to here and do this command again that we just did a second ago, which is the summary command. And both of them will be no longer MPLS, but they'll be INET A. And um, if we actually do traffic class detail. So again, here is our EF. And it says that we are over on the INET path, which was our backup path. Um, we were on the MPLS path. We've been on the INET path for almost a minute now. Uh, we will reevaluate the primary service provider in two minutes and four seconds, him actually. And so this is the primary channel, this is the backup channel. And the question was, it was the reason for the latest route change. Here's the reason for the latest route change, loss, right? So we had loss. And so the loss rate that it detected was 1.47. Again, it is the WAM bridge. So it's a free tool, maybe not completely spot on, but it's great. I love it. So it went out of policy, and it was on the MPLS, and now it went over to the INET. And so it was, uh, that was the reason for the last change. And then the other thing that I absolutely love is this right here. Let's go ahead and move back up to that. This is currently what's happening in relationship to EF. And this is kind of sort of the code and the visibility of saying, this is what's going on. So what is going on? And it says, you know what? Your present um, channel is the INET. 
and uh, you normally would prefer it, so normally it's your fallback, but right now it's your present channel. You normally would prefer the primary for this traffic class, but uh, because of a problem, and then the question becomes, what problem? Well, all we have to do is look for the F. And there you go. We have loss on the MPLS, and that's the reason why we are not over on that channel. So let's go ahead and go back over here and see what that looks like. This is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. And that's it. Quick and simple, we went ahead and we built the streams. I showed you how to go ahead and add additional columns, do copy and pastes, increment, decrement, duplicate, get around, move the custom views, look at the outputs, add the latencies to the advanced. So hope you had a lot of, bit, a lot of fun with um, playing in the lab, networking with fish, and I'm out. Have a great day.